This is your Estuary Report. I'm Jerry Kay. Slow it, spread it, sink it. Here's a story about green streets and why they are so important. The green street is an attempt to remake how our streets relate to stormwater and runoff. Taking stormwater through landscape controls, through pervious surfaces, uh, into stormwater wetlands to clean it up, to find alternate uses for it other than simply chucking it out into the bay. There are a number of benefits. These are everything from reducing creek erosion and creating healthier creeks uh, by in part reducing the pollution that goes from the urban landscape down into creeks and down into San Francisco Bay. Obviously we have the whole automobile infrastructure uh, and even just some of our urban services, roofs, trash in the cities, uh, you know, all of that is getting washed down into creeks and into the bay. So the landscaping is filtering that An example of Portland where they're bringing curb bulb outs, landscaping medians, things that can take advantage of existing wasted space to clean up stormwater runoff and also provide benefits like pedestrian safety and traffic calming. As we have impervious surfaces, more water is running off. So it's this punch of energy that reaches creeks. And by filtering it through landscaping, we're slowing it down. We're letting it soak into the ground. And we're ultimately uh, having healthier creeks, healthier fish as a result. Streets are a primary source of pollution from oil and other toxins. And they're also a primary source of just extra water that runs off and creates flooding. So there's water quantity and quality concerns about our streets and our overall urban development and sidewalks and roofs and such. The main concept is the change that we can create in the already constructed watersheds. So how can we retrofit green designs and clean stormwater designs into our already built streets? Surfaces like asphalt and concrete and roofs are designed not to allow water to infiltrate into them. So they're impervious and they tend to generate a lot of runoff and that water runs off quickly, it gains velocity and it gains volume, momentum, and it carries those pollutants with it. So that hardscape of impervious surfaces, a lot of smart growth or low impact development designs are looking to increase the softscape in our urban landscapes. And that softness or that porosity, that permeability is attempting again to both slow the flow, to slow it, to spread it, to sink it, if it's appropriate, and also to biofilter it and bring some biology in so those oils that come off of the streets can be mediated through biology versus being directly discharged to our bay and our waterways and places where we swim and fish and recreate and, and do those sorts of things. Conceptually, it's very simple. The idea of the soil as a filter and using vegetation to maintain that soil's openness as water flows in. And so it's a way of protecting water quality, protecting the bay, which is really all of our public trust, and in doing so also improving the, the livability of the street, increasing the vegetation, the overall ambiance, the uh, perception of, of the aesthetics of the city. We are taking advantage of a resource in the city to really support uh, not only our green infrastructure, but also to reduce the impacts that we have, uh, the impacts of urbanization on our blue infrastructure, on creeks and the, and the bay. Imagine the statistic for a second that in every eight months there's 10.9 million gallons of oil that runs off just parking lots alone that dripped out of the oil pan from your car, which is equal to one Exxon Valdez oil spill every eight months in the lower 48 states of the U.S. And that oil or the copper from your brake pads doesn't go away. There is no away on this planet. The away, unless someone's been there recently or you can get a visa to go away, I don't really know where that is. We are connected to the ocean, to the bay, to the creeks, to our homes, to the ridges, to the trees. It's all one interrelated system. And there's many other species who are also making a living in that system besides our human communities. And I think we need to learn to better share our toys in the sandbox, if you will. How do we connect and see the bay as an indicator of the integrity of our human settlement? If the bay is cleaner, and has better swimmability and fishability, then we're doing a good job in the uplands that feed to the bay.